نمان الاربعين نمان الاعتكاف نمان الخلوة نمان العزلة نمان الرياضة نمان السلوك نمان الصيام نمان تعالى العظيم في هذا المزيد اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد حتى يرضى سيدنا محمد الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا نهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وما توفيقي ولا اعتمادي إلا على الله عليه توكلت وإليه أنيب وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ولا مثيل له ولا نظير له في علو شأنه وعظيم سلطانه وأشهد أن سيدنا وسندنا ومولانا محمدا عبده وحبيبه ورسوله أرسله الله تعالى رحمة للعالمين صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه وذريته وخلفاء الراشدين المهديين من بعده وزرائه الكاملين العاملين في عهده خصوصا منهم على التحقيق ومراء المؤمنين حضرات أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي ذوي القدر الجلي وعلى بقية الصحابة والتابعين رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين أيها المؤمنون الحاضرون اتقوا الله وأطيعوه إن الله مع الذين اتقوا والذين هم محسنون قال الله تعالى في كتابه المنزل على لسان نبيه المرسل وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون ما أريد منهم من رزق وما أريد أن يطعمون إن الله هو الرزاق ذو القوة المتين الله الله الحمد لله والشكر لله والصلاة والسلام على سيد رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه الله سبحانه وتعالى has afflicted the whole humanity with this disease a uh, something that Yeah, and it's been it's been it's been going on for six weeks now. So I'm sure you've all heard many explanations and uh, many many ways of understanding why is this. Some saying this is punishment. Some saying this is uh, uh, a reminder. But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is merciful and is just. And he wants good for his servants. He wants good for all of us. So that is our belief as Muslims that Al-Khair from the six 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 pillars of belief, Khairi wa Sharrihi min Allah, Hakka Qabul. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Everything he does. He does with justice and mercy. And care for his servants. So, Alhamdulillah, our way is to submit Islam as Mawlana Sheikh Muhammad raised his maqam. said, Aslim, Taslim. Aslim means submit. Submit, you will find safety. And Alhamdulillah, all of us here have reached Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. When Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to get the... Um, to the month of Rajab and Sha'ban, he would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant, uh, to grant us to reach the month of Ramadan. Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab and Sha'ban wa balighna Ramadan. And make us to reach this holy month. Why? Because this holy month is a magnificent uh, Junna, bounty, grant, uh, mercy. It is an ocean of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy to his abid that to reach this month is to reach a huge opportunity huge opportunity for what? for, for being safe safe from hellfire safe to be forgiven all our sins to be as if never happening uh, to be An opportunity to be close and near and dear to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And subhanallah, yani this, this holy month, the ata in it is, uh, is remarkable. There's a hadith of Prophet sallallahu that when he was going up on the mimbar, Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam came to him and 
three times Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would say Ameen 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 and when the Sahaba when Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came down from the pulpit from the member they asked him we've never he heard you say this uh, every step you took up on the member you said Ameen so he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Qala atani Jibreel Alayhi Salam Faqala ya Muhammad Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam, when he took the first step, he came. And he, three things he mentioned to him. Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam came to Prophet while he's on the pulpit and made three du'as. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam said three times, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. Yani, who is making the du'a? Sayyidina Jibreel. On who's saying Ameen? Sayyidina Muhammad So in this in this hadith, is there any doubt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer that dua? So this hadith, I read the hadith because it is it is very telling about the magnificence of the month of Ramadan and the importance it has for us, for Muslims who uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them tawfiq to do their best in this holy month. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Haddathana Abdullahi bin Muhammad bin Abdul Aziz Imla, Haddathana Abdul Aziz bin Al Munib al Khurasani, Haddathana Ishaq bin Abdullah bin Kisan, An Abi, An Sa'id bin Jubair, An Ibn Abbas, Rodi Allah, An Um Ajma'i, Anna Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Irtaka al Mimbar, Fa'amana Thalath Marat, Makal. هل تدرون لماذا أمنت؟ قالوا الله ورسوله أعلم. So Sayyidina Muhammad, as we mentioned, it went on the pulpit and made three amins. When he came down, there's many versions of the hadith. Some of the hadith said the Sahaba asked. Some 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 narrations say he asked him. Do you do you know why I said amin? But so he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in this narration, قَالَ جَاءَنِ جِبْرِيلَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ فَأَخْبَرَنِي أَنَّهُ مَنْ ذُكِرْتُ عِنْدَهُ يَا مُحَمَّدْ فَلَمْ يُصَلِّ عَلَيْكَ فَدَخَلَ النَّارِ فَأَبْعَدَهُ اللَّهُ وَأَصْحَقَهُ عَادَنَ اللَّهُ فَأَمْنَا Jibreel alayhi salam came to, to me, he said to me, Oh, Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever is mentioned, Whoever you are mentioned in front of him and has not made salawat on you, he will enter hellfire. فَأَبْعَدَهُ اللَّهُ أَصْحَقَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him far away from his mercy. وَأَصْحَقَ and he Yani he punished him. So the first Amin, the first Dua Jibreel alayhi salam made is for anyone who does not give a proper etiquette and adab for Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, he has a, a very rough time. Then he mentioned the second one. وَمَنْ أَدْرَكَ وَالِدَيْ أَحَدْ أو وَالِدَيْ أَوْ أَحَدْهُمَا If you reach the time where your parents grew, grow old in your care and one of them or two of them and they do not become a means for you to enter heaven then also the same end. And the third one مَنْ أَدْرَكَ شَهْرَ رَمَضَانَ فَلَمْ يُغْفَرْ لَهُ فَدَخَلَ فَدَخَلَ النَّارِ فَأَبْعَدَهُ اللَّهُ قَالَ آمِينَ يعني it shows you the third one is that whoever witnesses the month the holy month of Ramadan every Muslim who gets an opportunity to live to reach the holy month of Ramadan and does not is not forgiven in this holy month his sins are not forgiven 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Jibreel alayhi salam is making dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take him out of his mercy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punish him. So it is clear that this, this hadith tells you that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu is saying to us uh, and Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam through, through this hadith that this, mo this month you'd have to be really unlucky you'd have to be really somebody who maghboon uh, who is, has no luck to reach this holy month in Ramadan and not to reach Allah's mercy not to reach Allah's forgiveness means it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this month such an opportunity and a, and a, and a way for us to uh, reach his uh, pleasure and it is enough to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that all the amal of Bani Adam in another hadith <coughs> is for him except a siyam فَإِنَّهُ لِي وَأَنَا أَجْزِبِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says every other deed, every other action that we do, prayer, zikr, hajj, is for us. The only action that is not for us, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it is for me wa ana ajzibi. This is connected to me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is an action between me and my servant. Because it is an action that is has to do with the with the, with the uh, doings of the heart, of the nawaya, of sincerity. No one sees. When you say I'm fasting, you're fasting. It's between you and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. No one sees that uh, action. You're not doing something that can can be considered muraat. It's it's purely for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He says, "Wa ana ajzibe." And Allah is saying, this is for me, and I will give my servant according to my generosity, according to my ata, according to my greatness. And he said, And the smell of the mouth of the believer is more sweet the smell is 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 atyab for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the misk than the smell of musk and yani, subhanallah the when a person fasts and uh, nothing enters their mouth by the end of the day uh, because of uh, what's in the mouth of bacteria or this or that you have a certain smell and usually that smell is something that is I mean, not uh, uh, it is maybe repulsive or it might not be a good thing uh, to smell but because that servant has prevented himself from eating and drinking for Allah's sake that smell becomes dearer to Allah and better than the smell of musk that's why Imam Shafi'i took a hukum from that, took a, a, uh, a ruling from that, that siwak after dhuhr time, and it's better, it's recommended not to make siwak, not to, for the fasting person. Why? Because he understood from this hadith, if the smell of um, the person who is fasting, the smell of the mouth of the person who is, who is fasting, is, is something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes, then anything that makes that smell go away is better not to do. And from it is the suwak. So in Shafi'i fiqh, you're not supposed, to, a person after dhuhr prayer is not supposed to make suwak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us, inshallah, to the tawfiq, the success to do our best in this holy month and I know it's difficult for people 
not to pray Jum'ah, not to congregate, not to pray Taraweeh. But you must trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a wisdom and be grateful and thankful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted you life to reach this holy month and hope and wish that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also grant you tawfiq to do your best in this holy month and to know that just by reaching it is a great ata. Just to reach the month of Ramadan, how many, I don't know if you know, but we've, we, we may all know people that um, are no longer with us, that were here last Ramadan or the Ramadan before, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken them back. So to reach this month and to be in this holy month, um, an obedient servant, a person who's fasting and respecting this month is itself a grant and ata from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are so many, so many um, benefits. We mentioned one that Siyam is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He gives according to His magnificence and greatness and generosity. And there's no limit on that. And that in another hadith sahih it says there is nothing there's no other action there's no other deed that comes close to fasting and people also they're saying uh, you know you have issues you have problems you have difficulties well in this holy month according to uh, hadith sahih that 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 the sa'im has a da'wa la turad in one hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every day he has, in according to uh, some uh, athar, and uh, 600,000 people every day are granted safety from hellfire by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They call utaqa ur rahman. And others have said a thousand thousand means a million. Every night Allah has grants a million believers safety and guarantee from that they will not enter heaven. They're utaqa. So, and, and it's said at the end of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives as much as he gave the whole month of Ramadan. So 30 days, 30 million, and by the end of Ramadan, another 30 million are, are granted to be. So, yani, subhanallah. And in that hadith also says that للصائم, للمسلم, for the Muslim and Muslimah, they have a da'wah. Every day they have, they have Allah grants them the ability to make dua that is accepted. That is accepted. And ulama said, especially at the time of iftar. Don't just make iftar, make dua at that time. وَأَنَّ لِلصَّائِمِ فَرْحَتَيْنِ إِذَا أَفْتَرْ And the hadith of Prophet ﷺ that the one who is fasting has has two happiness. Once when he breaks fast and the other one when he meets his Lord. He will be happy with the rewards Allah grants on him with his fasting. And that siyam, if we if we do siyam, it becomes a shafi' for us yawm al-qiyamati. He was Ramadan will manifest as a being and he will he will stand in front of his lord and said ay rabb mana'tuhu at-ta'ama wa ash-shahawata bin nahari fa shaffa'ni fi oh my lord i have stopped him from eating and from his uh, desires during the day so make me an intercessor for him this is in rawahu uh, ahmad وَأَنَّ مَنْ صَامَ يَوْمًا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بَاعَلَ اللَّهُ بِذَلِكَ الْيَوْمُ وَجْهُ عَنْ نَارِ سَبْعِينَ خَرِيفًا Another hadith in uh, Sahih Muslim that whoever fasts one day for Allah's sake purely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make between him and hellfire the distance of 70 kharif 70, 70 years 70 fold away from hellfire وَأَنَّ مَنْ صَامَ يَوْمًا ابْتِغَاءَ وَجِلْ خُتِمَ لَهُ بِهِ دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ Also, 
this hadith says that whoever sincerely fasts one day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts, he will enter heaven. So many hadiths. وَأَنَّا فِي الْجَنَّةِ بَابٌ يُقَالُ لَهُ الرَّيَّانِ يَدْخُلُ مِنْهُ الصَّائِمُونَ that in heaven there is a, a gate called Rayyan from which those who are fasting enter and one when the last one from those who fasted enters that that gate will be closed this is the month of Ramadan the month of Quran the month in which the gates of heaven are wide open the whole month and the gates of hell are shut close the month where devils and the worst kind of devils mother devil they're they're tied up and they can't bother humanity the month of qiyam the month of istighfar may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be granted to be min utaqa'ir rahman inshallah all of us to be people of who reach Allah's mercy وَمِنَ اللَّهِ التَّوْفِيقِ بِحُرْمَةِ الْفَاتِحَةِ وَعَلَيْكُمْ السَّلَامِ Anyone who is saying salam, وَعَلَيْكُمْ السَّلَامِ Inshallah, we will have Khatm al-Khawajagan tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Who likes to join is most welcome. Assalamu alaikum.